Konnichiwa, couch potatoes. It's a little delayed, but we are here to talk about Shogun on FX. Now, guys, I have read the book. Oh, upside down. I have read the book. I have I reviewed have the book <laughs> over on Mike's book review. So if you're wanting me to kind of like talk about the whole plot, I'm not going to do that. I have done that when I reviewed the book. Now, before I did watch this series, I had read the book. I had watched the 1980 miniseries, which I liked quite a bit, but I just knew from the first moment that I saw that uh, Hironuka Sonata was kind of uh, going to be Tornaga in this new adaptation, I was like, this is going to be amazing. Because I just felt like he doesn't attach himself to anything unless it's really good. And I just felt like so when I saw that first trailer, they're going to do this right. They're really, really sinking their teeth into the story. And I was very excited. So much so that I was telling her, you've got to watch this with me because I think that you will really, really enjoy it. And I think enjoy it you did, yes? Yeah. No, um, when you were reading, you asked me a couple questions where I was like, yeah, it's about this. It's about the Treaty of Tortoise. And... <laughs> Yeah, other little historical pieces where I was like, I think I might really enjoy this. I think the things this. I struggled with the most was like the Portuguese and the Spanish and, the Portuguese, and all that stuff. And yeah. What is it where the world's like cut in half or That's whatever? That's the you're treaty. Talking. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know about any of that stuff. So yeah, it's nice to be married to a history teacher, guys, when you're doing things like that. But this show was very exciting for me. I'll say it exceeded my expectations in every way. It was one of the most faithful adaptations I've ever seen. And I'm very, very salty about them saying they're going to make a season two because it is not going to be written by James Clavell. And I was like, you're going to be ruining the perfect adaptation just because they're so excited about the success that it did have. But again, that's for a different video. We're here to talk about the Shogun season one, I guess you would say, miniseries. And uh, you have lots of notes over here to talk about. So much I have of it, like, lots this, of this ended, what, two months ago, but she still wants to talk about it right? because she has so much things to, to say about it. And as someone who has watched this or experienced this story three different ways now, I am happy to talk about that. So uh, what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about good things? You want to talk about what you liked, what you didn't like? What are your general thoughts? Yeah, what so do you want I'm, to do? I'm definitely a non-reader. Mm -hmm. And then I did catch when you were watching, what is that, the 80s or 70s? 19, 1980. 80s. The 80s version one. I caught it off and on, but I wasn't in. And you watched it in a couple different sittings as well. Oh, yeah, it long. took a well, while. It's like nine hours yeah. long. So, yeah. yeah, it took a bit. Yeah, so, and, and yeah, understandably. I did like it, but the big difference with that, when I started reading the book, because I did watch that miniseries first, and I did Lonesome Dove that same way, where I watched Lonesome Dove miniseries, I loved it, and then I read the book, and I loved it too. Same with this. I, I, I like the miniseries. I love the book. I think this new version, obviously, this adaptation is far superior to that one. But what that one did, what this one did was it put it all from uh, Blackthorn's point of view, uh, you don't you don't know anything that the Japanese characters are saying at all, you know. And I, and I understood why they did it that way for TV at the time, but I feel like now was the perfect time to do something like this. Where what was it, ninety? We think ninety percent of the dialogue in the show was not in English, yeah, and it didn't diminish anything. I thought it was just Agreed. awesome. It made it just so cool. But uh, uh, yeah, so this, go ahead. Uh, so so yeah, I just loved all the historical parts. I mean, I, obviously, the this is a work of historical fiction. Mm. So, but there are definitely references to things like the Counter Reformation and the Jesuits, the Spanish, the Portuguese, um, a lot of, of references to Japanese history, which is not my strong point, but there were they were there. I did recognize some. Um, and then just the costuming and the and the scene shots. I mean, they were Yeah, the cinematography stunning. was great. Yes. The costuming was amazing. Yeah. Seriously, I felt like this was probably the closest thing to being Game of Thrones quality. Oh, yeah. I definitely think I because they, they put that work into not just the writing and the acting, but also the costuming, the sets, everything mm -hmm. being shot on location. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. This was shot in Canada. I would have never guessed that this was Canada. It was done so well. Uh, yeah, it yeah. was just not that anything is Canada. I'm just saying that no, it was like, wow, well, I just, not, it, yeah. just I would have never guessed that that was Canada or, or anything like that. But yeah, the uh, the historical stuff, the historical fiction part of it is where people have been snapping back at me saying, actually, season two should be a problem because it's just based off of history. No, guys, it has events in Japanese history, but all these characters are amalgamations not, of yeah. several historical Different. figures yeah. you know so it, it isn't just like it's a straight one for one historical biopic on this character you know so Toronaga is, is a, a amalgamation of several several characters yeah um, and then just some things that I thought were kind of interesting talking about most of it is spoken in Japanese mm -hmm. I didn't have any problem reading the captions I'm, I'm a reader yeah. You're a reader, so we got young not an kids. Issue for us. We got used to watching subtitles, you know, when they were I younger because it was loud. And long now it's, it's hard you. to do without it. So yeah, that's never been a problem for me as well. I mean, we did dark that way, and I thought it was great. Now I have to listen yeah. to the awful dubbing. The dubbing you know, can so get quite. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna put out a dub of this or not. Hmm. Um, and then I know, kind of the premise of the story is there should be a big battle. 
Well, I think that... And I it, didn't feel like I missed anything. Yeah, see, that's the thing. It's like, this is very much not about the battle. This yeah. is... There's this... What's going didn't on with the stranger in strange land, and he's experiencing the political power struggle of the civil war that's going on between these, these casts here. And it's, it's just... It's not that kind of story, you know? So people that were disappointed saying, oh, I wanted the big battle. I mean... Tornaga gives you a spoiler in the last episode of what's going to happen in that battle. So you, why do you need to see it? You know, right. so it to be it's it's this is very much a character study. It's not that kind of story. It's really not. It's very much about Medico. It's very much about Blackthorn and Tornaga and kind of their relationship as all this is going on. So for me, I understand that when I did read it for the first time, I said I think my problem that I had reading it was if I had known that basically like if you're doing like 10 chapters that like chapter nine was supposed to be like the climax, you know, then I wouldn't have been as disappointed with it was at the end. But after a few weeks went by, I was like, actually that, that ending is quite brilliant. It's one of those kind of what I have with the first law, which you haven't finished reading yet. So I'll stop talking there. <laughs> but it's one of those where you look back on it. It's like, actually that ending is quite brilliant. And I do like the way they did it. And the show. Perfect. Did it perfect. Um, so one of my critiques is it is slow moving. Mm -hmm. But move so fast. I was <laughs> if, concerned. If, that's, uh, uh, if that makes any sense. I was concerned because, I mean, look, being straight here, I think to uh, to uh, Western audiences, Eastern names can be kind of confusing. They can be kind of jumbled together. A lot of them can kind of sound similar. And I know that's a real struggle for people when they're reading it. So I was curious, as a non-reader, if you, if everybody, just everybody, not just you, if everybody was going to be able to keep up with this many names and mm -hmm. unions and, and, and these alliances and stuff, you were going to be able to keep up. Do you think you were able to do that? Do you think they differentiated enough for you to do that? The main ones, yes. There were times where I was asking, who, who is he? Where, where is, who is he allied with? And, and there were some confusions. The main ones, though, were obvious enough to get. And that's kind of my gripe is I felt like the action moved slow. It took forever to get to the next thing. But I could have spent more time with every one of these characters. Yeah. Every I wanted more about Ochiba. I wanted more about the gardener who got hanged because I didn't care yeah, when he got they hanged. They did actually speed it up. That's that's a part of the book that actually like wrecked me emotionally. That's I, I felt like they nothing. really they really kind of sped through it. And there were some. That's my only complaint as a reader of the books is that this could have been twenty plus hours yeah. to do it faithfully because I do feel like it was rushed. But I understand for TV you had to do that. There's a lot of slice of life in this book and I know that they can't just have a full episode of Blackthorn and Mariko riding horses. You know, they can't do that where like, you could do in the book. But uh, yeah, they got all the big moments. But I do think it, it would feel kind of rushed if you have read the book for sure. So yeah, that's where I'm like, I felt like it was slow paced but I also felt like my time with the characters because there were so many were rushed. And I would have loved more backstory on Tornaga and his brother's controversy mm -hmm. and uh, Mariko and her dad's controversy, which I think I eventually got the gist yeah, of. They, I the thought it was a good idea. very small puzzle pieces they gave me. Slow roll it like they did, but I think that they did slow roll it so much by the time it happened. You're like, wait, I don't really remember what say, was going on. I kind of think I understood <laughs> yeah, what happened. Yeah, happens. but no, getting to see stuff like uh, younger Tornaga, like those flashback stuff, you don't get at in the book, so that's really cool. Uh, and I, I do think that they... I, I don't want to spoil this in case you haven't watched. I don't know if you'd be watching this if you haven't, but it's just mm -hmm. like the big reveal of the book. I feel like they handled it so good in the show. Where I don't say that she guessed it, but you were just like, I'm not surprised. Well, yeah. no. Yeah, I was I was floored when I got As to a reader? The yes, yeah. I was floored because you don't see anything from that character's point of view until the very end. You're like, oh, yeah, you know. So it, I, I think they did that really, really well. I think they did. Well, I uh, think it's a little, uh, what is it? Is it Macbeth where I think the lady doth protest him mm. too much? Like, how many times are you going to tell me that it's not that? Mm. Okay. Are you convincing me or are you convincing mm. you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so no, I think that the, the, the pacing was it was probably pretty quick. Uh, but again, I, I, all the people that have not read this book, and I'm going to be honest, it's more people that love this show than not have not read it because this is a beast of a book. It took me three months, guys. It's really good. But I recommend pacing yourself. I mean, you keep holding it upside down. Such a beautiful book that you can't get anymore. By the way, <laughs> I just like to show this off. But uh, yeah, it, it's it couldn't have been it couldn't have turned out better for me personally. And I got to say, look, I love Sonata. I think he's one of the greatest actors. Man, he's everything he's in. I feel like he's got so much gravitas. He just commands a scream. The actress that played Mariko was beautiful and stunning and awesome. And I thought that she was very convincing as that character that she picks up a spear. She's probably going to kick your ass. You know, I thought they did that 
in a way where I didn't feel like, yeah, that's unrealistic. You know, like when you got those, we got those movies where like this 90 pound chicks like backflipping oh. a 300 pound man. They didn't want yeah. like that. I think that the way that it was done is really, really believable and, and strong. Um, I thought Blackthorn was great. Yes. He was really yeah. good. I loved him from Sorry About Your Sack of Shit, Lord. I thought that was an <laughs> that amazing was line. brilliant. I, I just like, I, I, I lashed onto him really quick. And I was like, that is Blackthorn. I, 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 I liked the Blackthorn in this. I did. I did. But right away, I was like, okay, this guy is probably playing it a little closer to the book, book I think. Yeah. But I got to say, the actor who played Yabu stole the whole show, I oh, thought. Oh, sure. Yes. He was so <laughs> good. He got, eh? He, I, so good. So good. I mean, yeah. or, I mean, talk about rip from the page. That guy was Perfect, and I, for all I know, he's like a legend in Japan. I have no idea. I besides Sonata, I didn't know any of these actors or actresses before the show. So for again, if you guys know anything, that guy just wow. He understood the assignment and he killed it. He, he really did. did. He really did. Um, yeah, he did great. Ishido did great. Ishido. Um, I did. I already say Ochiba. I could get Ochiba? more of her backstory. Yeah, I, I think That's they, a gave, you, they I gave you like, enough, but they probably could have given yes, you some more. Yes, they that, gave I me think. just yeah. enough to be like, ooh, but what about this? But wait, couldn't I have more? Um, she's got no pages of notes, you guys. I I really had like just a bunch of th thoughts. Yeah, where obviously Toronago wanted there to be a war. like. Why are you doing all this if you don't want there to be a war? Mm. If you if you genuinely don't care, I I felt like not surprised at the end. Did I know that was coming? No. Mm. Um, and then also where people were, I think were kind of gutted by Mariko's ending, mm. where I was like in, in a in a in a series where. Multiple times an episode, people are begging to, to commit, commit Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, please let me kill myself. <laughs> I'm begging you. Yeah. And it is literally her only wish. motive. Yeah. yeah, for her husband, for herself, for her lord. Yeah, I had to know that was kind of, like you. You couldn't have been surprised, right? Yeah. Do you think that they did uh, Mariko and her husband Buntaro? Do you think they did their, their relationship in a way that you could? Appreciate, I guess, because it was Both a very perspectives. If yes. they had, a, if they had Facebook back then, their status would have been. Co it's complicated because com their marriage was very complicated. Well, it's arranged. Yeah, it's arranged, so it doesn't need to be complicated. Well, you know, he genuinely loved her, but you know, he uh, he might have smacked her around a few too many times. I think that's some Pride and Prejudice BS. There, you think so? Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, I love you, but yeah, I'm but too prideful to be with you. Yeah. Um, and then my last, uh, no, I have two little hot takes left. Sure. Hot takes. Here we hot go. Hot takes. Um, so the ending, you were pretty unhappy with the ending. No, was it? Um, not the ending of the story, but the ending oh, of, Oh, yeah. Blackthorn. They Blackthorn, do, they yes. do show something that, because the book, the way it, it just like ends, you don't know what happens to Blackthorn really. Mm -hmm. Like where his life goes after the story. It just kind of ends. This gives you like some kind of weird flash forward to many, many years when he's like an old man. And it's like, I felt like that kind of took a lot of the stakes out of the very last moments uh, with him and Tornaga. I mean, where you, I feel like without that, you would have been holding your breath because you don't know if he's going to make it or not. I felt like showing that really, and that's when I started thinking, they're going to try to do a season two or three of this, aren't they? And that's when, that's when I, I feel, realized that they're going to do, because like Handmaid's Tale was supposed to just follow the book. But it was such a huge smash. They said, we're going to keep the series going. And what do you know? Everyone's like, wow, this is really bad now. Yeah. Mm. So I, I, this could be awesome. Okay, to me, so it's just like you're, James Cavell has five other books in the Asian saga. Adapt one of those. That's you where know? I was kind of going with that, too. Um, so you're thinking it's a literal uh, future prophecy. But that episode was called Dream Within a Dream, if I remember correctly. Okay. And my thought was, he's still in Japan. And he's just dreaming. Oh, he's, he's going to his happy place. Of what his future would have been had he ever made it out of okay. Japan. Because in those old man scenes, in his hand, he's yeah, holding. Yeah, he's the cross he drops in the water. Yeah, yeah. her rosary. It's a rosary, yeah. right? And he, like one of the last scenes of him, present day or not within a dream, uh, is him throwing it into the water. And could this have eventually washed back to him? Yes. Could he have another one that looks very similar from some yeah. other girl? Yes. He had Tornaga's sword but, in that thing, too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. so I yeah. think it's a dream of, I've made it back, and these are my grandkids from the children I left behind. And so I kind of think it's not necessarily an interpretation of the future. And then that was my, my other piece, that I hope they make this more like an anthology series if they plan on doing more uh, than a pre 
Although yeah, it's like type in and just put Sonata as a role in that. He'd be awesome in that too. I just as, don't understand why. Why? Yeah. Why? So American Horror Story, where they kind of keep that same yeah, cast of characters cast. Mm-hmm. and the same ideas, but spin different stories. I think that could be a great way to do that and acknowledge the author's other work. Since you were telling me he does other Asian and stories, but yeah. not not saying they're hundreds yeah. of years apart, different characters for each one. Yeah, and but I think you could really do that well like i like the american horror story anthology yeah no um, i would prefer that they do it that way because look I, I it's one of those things where i just, they didn't think that it was going to be this huge they had no idea it was going to be this big of a success and i felt like they just want to jump on it while they can and i understand that i do understand that I mean, like, in the end i'm like make your money man do what you want to do I, people like me that love the book are just going to be snooty about it but if he didn't have any other works i understand that but right. I'm like, you've but shown does. that you can do this you can yeah. do this faithfully and obviously the showrunners love his work let them adapt one of his other books, man. You know, give them the money. Let it go. You know, you, if you want to do it, you can call the whole thing. I don't know. You couldn't really call it Shogun and call it another. You well, know, they did the, for Game of Thrones. Yeah. The Song but, of Ice and Fire but, is the name of the series. But other parts of the Asian saga aren't oh, dealing aren't with the Shogun, be Shogun and Bushido yeah. and all that. So they should have, I mean, if they would have, if they'd known it was going to be this big, they might have just called it, you know, like the subtitle Asian Saga. And they can just go with each one as the Asian Saga. I don't, I, mean, know. I don't know. If you can back name Star Wars, you can back name Shogun. I mean, they're still not. I mean, they're talking about that they've, they've, they've signed these actors on for, you know, multiple seasons, but they still haven't said there's going to be a season two. So, you know what I would right I would tune in for? Mm-hmm. I would tune in for a Toronaga prequel. Sure. Sure. Even that, I would Especially if it, if it goes like to him taking over and then him with the conflict. Because, like I said, I. I wanted more with and these characters. And you can keep Sonata and just have him recounting his life as a younger Ooh. man, you know? you know, Over be, some tea? Over there in the tea house. He could yes. be over there talking about yes. these things. I think it really was. But, I, I mean, in the end, I'm just happy that you liked it because I hyped this through the roof for her. <laughs> and if she didn't like it, I'd have been very, very upset. And this is one of those shows I try to tell people, like, well, what would I like? I'm like, look, if you're one of those people who's got to have your device in your hand, you got to be like, your what? No. You have to pay 100%. Not just because it's in a different language. You're fluent in Japanese. I don't think yeah. you really have to really understand. There are so many moving parts. And if you don't pay attention 100% of the time, factions, you're screwed. Um, the factions screwing over factions within factions. Yeah. Because I did. Sometimes I'd be like, I think it went this way. Would you clarify for me as my, my reader? I know people, they really got in that mood where they think, oh, I've got a live tweet while I watch this, man. Just... Enjoy this because it's eye, it's visual eye candy yeah, and it's amazing scene, performances. Scenes, You're shots. not going to want to look down and miss any moment of the show. It's absolutely stunning. The performances are incredible, and again, you're going to need to read all this dialogue. And I think it's worth it if you haven't watched it. I don't know what you're doing here. If you haven't, I do. Are. I do recommend go watch it. Yeah, it's very yeah. Cool. So I, I think it'll be time well spent. FX, I gotta say, FX is pretty solid. I mean, mm-hmm. FX is rarely put out. I mean, some of my favorite shows mm-hmm. ever have been on FX. The Shield was amazing on FX. The Americans is one of my favorite shows of all time. I don't feel they miss Sons of Anarchy. I gotta get her to watch that. I haven't watched that you one. Know, yet. So it's, I mean, there's so many things. <laughs> FX is always reliable. I feel like so. I do hope they keep this showrunner, this this group together that ran the show, and they do Taipan or Gaijin or something in the Asian saga instead of Shogun, season two. But I. Pretty sure I'm gonna lose that battle because they're all the people that I've talked to that did not read the book are like, fuck yeah, I want season two, I want more of this, you know. And I understand, I understand. That means that they did it right. They did well, a good job. Yeah, but then what are you gonna watch him? Watch him continually trick Blackthorn? Like mm, that's gonna run. I don't know. That's that's one of those points where I said like with the. Uh, you realize Mariko's gone, right? Like. Well, it's like with. <laughs> When they when they try to do like a sequel to a Stephen King story, and it's just like, well, is it written by Stephen King? No. <laughs> then it ain't going to be as good. Sorry, you're not as good of a writer as Stephen King. That's how I feel about this. You're not James Clavell. I don't care how well you know the book. How about you think you know we do it? How's that working out for Rings of Power? Yeah. So, there we go. I got to always bring it back to Rings of Power. But, guys, Shogun, I know, like I said, this is a little late. You guys are probably I'm already saying if you know, you've seen it, about I, this. Yeah. yeah. I'd love Let to know, know what you, you guys think. think. Yeah. A- again, uh, readers and non-readers, I'd love both of those opinions if you have read it. If you've not read it, I'd love to know what you think. Do you think that you was as good as I did? So I would love to know. Did you did you enjoy the things that she did? Uh, hit us in the comments, guys, and we will talk to you there. No seppuku required. <laughs>